Hello and good morning, evening or whatever, whatever time it is for you. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over how to do this fading in and fading out. Now, this is a pretty simple effect to do and it doesn't involve coding in the way we're going to be doing it today, which is really great for a lot of people because I know a lot of people are not a big fan of coding. So as you can see, it works fine. So you could have it fade like this to black and then on the next scene, you could have it fade um, back out since it works on overlay scenes overlay scenes do not go away when you switch to another scene So all you need to do is as soon as that scene starts you just need to call this one right here um, Yeah, uh, so this fading out one you just need to call that uh, Because you can call these individually so I can just use fading out one even though it's not faded out now I can do that if I like so as you can see when I do them in order it works really well So you can go switch between scenes and stuff So as you can see it works great. So let's go ahead and get into it and learn how to do this. All right, so we are here in a new scene. Um, so let's go ahead and start off by making just a scene so that we can see everything's working. So scale this out, um, move the plane up. I'm gonna go to textured mode, of course, and of course, switch it to Blender game. And for this, we're gonna need it to be in GLSL. So, in my case, uh, in your case, you might have multiple scenes, um, but I'm just going to be showing off in one scene, and it can be easily adapted to multiple scenes, but I'm just going to be doing it within one scene, and it could be useful within just one scene if you wanted to fade, um, so let's say you wanted to fade to a pause screen or something, you could use it for that, I guess. It's really up to what you want, uh, usually it's for switching between scenes, I think it would probably be the best. All right. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create a new scene by clicking this plus and this is going to be a new and it's going to be called overlay. Sorry, my um, keyboard's a bit weird uh, for where it is so I can't really talk when I'm typing at the same time. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is in this scene we're going to add a camera, so shift A, camera. I'm going to go Alt R and Alt G. Uh, I don't actually need to go Alt G because it is at the origin, but it might not be. So you can do that to clear the rotation. So Alt R is going to clear the rotation. Alt R. Yes, Alt R and Alt R is going to clear the rotation. Alt G is going to clear the location. And Alt S will clear the scale. Uh, so there's just some quick things you might want to know. All right, so I'm going to move this up. And I'm going to go into camera view. And I'm going to add a plane. Now I'm going to scale this to about here and across. And I'm also going to come along here, switch this to GLSL and blend a game and it's in texture. Now the reason for that is when you create a new scene, a new scene can be in any render engine you like. And so it, it's not like blend has a global render engine in. So we just need to make sure we switch to blend a game. Of course, it will automatically switch it, but it gives us all the settings we need on this this scene. So you, you should just do that by habit. Anyway, let's go ahead and come across to our material. I'm going to create a new material. And I'm going to turn this to shadeless and make sure it's black. All right, so now it is black. Because we want a shadeless black one. And if I have happen to put some lights in this overlay scene for some odd reason... I don't want it messing it up because um, if you didn't have this black and shadeless, then lights might come along and then we'll kind of ruin the whole effect of this being fading out to black. Of course, you can also change this to a different color and it can fade out to blue and it doesn't need to fade all the way if you want. So, let's go ahead and just change this back to black though. And I'm going to come down to the options down here and make sure I'm blending in. Well, I'm pretty sure these are not going to show up. Um, I might actually, I might be stupid. You want to go and click Object Color. Now, the reason we want this is we're going to not, we're not going to be animating the, uh, where is it? We're not going to be animating the transparency, although you can do that. I've found it's a lot um, better to animate the object color. So you can see we have an alpha thing here, so you can animate that. Uh, the reason for that is if you come over to the animation view or open up one of these, uh, the action editor, so we come down to Dope Sheet, where it's the Dope Sheet here and change it to action editor. When you create a new animation, it will pop up here in the list and this is what you use to um, 
create animations. Uh, what am I saying? Um, it will store like all your different kind of animations here. So if you have a character walking, you can have like a character walk cycle in there, and then you could have a new animation sort of with a different character doing something else, and that's what you can use in Blender. You can select the one you want to use uh, from that. So the reason I don't want to use other other type is it doesn't show up. Um, so I don't want to use where is it? So this is in a different scene because it switches between scenes if you are switching between these as well, which is useful and annoying. Um, if I add a material here, I'm just to show you. If I animate something like this transparency here, the problem with that is it doesn't show up here and you can't give it a rename it or anything, so it's not really good for organization. Um, plus it's like material based and we kind of want object based, so it'll be on the object and not animating the material. So let's not worry about that. Let's get rid of that and we're going to come back to the uh, logic edit default. And we're going to go ahead and hover over our um, color here and we're going to click I. Depending on how long you want it to fade out and in, you can go a few frames longer. Now I had it at 10 and I thought that was a bit fast so I'm going to go with 20. Then we'll come back to our color, grab this A which stands for alpha and drag it all the way down to zero. Now. If we go to the first frame, you can go shift and then the arrow keys will go each direction. So as you can see, left and right arrow keys will take you to the end and the start. So, oops, sorry, didn't need to shout. So now if we press A, Alt A, sorry, that will play the animation. As you can see, it's fading out. So, now that we've got that, what we can go ahead and do as there's two things we could do. What we could go ahead and do is we could come over here and we could go to the action editor and you see this new action here and we could call this fade um, out, right? And then we could make this a fake user so that it won't be deleted because if you take this off here now, if I did not click the S, F to make it a fake user, Blender would de automatically delete it unless it was like connected to an object because it didn't think we'd need it. So you want to make sure it's a fake user if it's not necessarily connected to an object, you're using it for animations or something. But the second way we can do it, and the way that I think will be good for what we're doing now, is you can go ahead and we can, I'm gonna to go to frame 30 just to make it a bit easier, uh, nicer. And what we're gonna go ahead and do, is come here, and we're gonna click I, hovering over this, and I'm not going to do that because that's the wrong object. So we're going to just undo that. Control Z if you've already done that. And we'll come to overlay. This object's the one we want to do. We're going to hover over it. Click, uh, make sure we're on frame 30, of course. Hit I. Go to frame uh, 50 in this case because we want 10 for uh, 20 frames in between. And we're going to go to that and we'll click I. So what we're doing here is in the logic press we can say from frame 0 to frame 20 is going to be our fade in animation and from frame 30 to frame 50 is our fade out animation. So now, what you see is of course we need to change this to texture mode. What you should be able to see is it fades out, goes along, fades back in. So we can use this part as a bit of an animation and then what that it makes it tidier is we can just have a animation called fade and if you want any other kind of fades you could just put them along this timeline timeline as well instead of having millions and millions of um different well not millions you know a, a bunch of different things for fade and fade out um something else kind of fade fade to red or something so uh by the way if you know just for a quick tip you can also since all these colors are animated we could change this to like red uh red or green or whatever color you wanted and it also changed that as well so just a quick tip if you want to have a different change to different colors as well so now we have it fading in and out so let's go ahead and set up logic for this so let's go to game logic and it's going to go back to the normal scene so let's go to overlay scene and we can call this fade just to keep everything tidy and we're going to go ahead and add a keyboard 
a keyboard sensor, sorry. And we're going to add an action and that action actuator. So this plays animations, uh, if you didn't know. So we're going to select our fade and our fade from both of these. Now from this one, I'm going to go from 0 to 20. And with this one, since we skipped 10 frames um, before we start the next animation, we're going to go from uh, 30. Because it's adding to 10 to 20, yeah, 30. And we're going to go from 30 to uh, what? 50. What am I doing? How am I not thinking right? right? <laughs> oh, anyway. We'll see if I've done something wrong. So let's press play now. So I've just gone with these keyboard sensors as well. And I've just gone key and then I've just clicked one in here, two. And now if we press play, one. Ah, we need to be in textured mode. One, fades out, two, fades in. Yes, so I have done the math correctly, which are pretty basic maths. But anyway, so you can see it's fading in and out. So how do we get this to do it on command when we're in the other scene without uh, complicated copying of properties and stuff? Um, well, it's actually surprisingly simple. So what we're going to do is get rid of these keyboard. And what we're going to do is add a message and a message. So now if we plug these in, what we can go ahead and do is we can say fade. And let's believe that's fade in. All right. And then we can say fade out. Here we go. Fade in, fade out. As you can see. Now, what we should be able to do is go to scene. And on the scene, what we're going to do is select the camera. And we're going to add it always. Now, I like to do this if I have overlay scene. I like to add it to the camera. You can add it to whatever object you like. I like to add it to the camera because it's kind of connected to what the camera does. Uh, I'm going to add an overlay scene. So what an overlay scene does, if you don't know what overlay scene does in Blender, it's basically in the name, it's overlay scene. So basically it overlays whatever's in that scene and the background of that scene is transparent and it appears on top of this scene. Uh, so we can go ahead and click add actuator and come down to, to, to scene and we can select overlay add overlay scene and also background scene so basically it makes this scene here this bit here of the scene the background transparent and you can see the other scene coming through here so that can be useful for you know uh, background sky boxes or something like that but in this case we don't need to do that so we're going to use add overlay scene and we're going to select our overlay scene. So we can connect this up and press play. So as you can see, it's completely black. And I believe that's because on this scene, as you can see, it's completely black. So what you might, might want to do is come over here and make sure you have the fake user enabled. So because we're going to delete this from, we're going to click this X, which is not going to delete us, it's going to unlink from this object. And when we exit Blender, if we do not have this fake user enabled, it will it will delete it. It will say, oh, nothing's using this. We do not need it. So you want to click that F for fake user. So now if I click unlink, it should be all fine. So now we can come back to game logic. Um, or we could have just stayed in that scene. And we want to come over to our object. And we want to grab this alpha and drag it down to zero. So now if we come back to our normal scene and press play as you can see it's completely transparent and you can't see it now one thing to note is why don't we just have that plane over like in front of this camera and i believe and i'm wrong and you can correct me if i am wrong but i believe that blender treats alpha a lot different if it's on another scene so you with blender sometimes you'll get problems with alpha um if you have a plant, the plant will be in front of the water or something, or like behind the water or something, and all these weird kind of things that happen. Um, so what happens here is, it's, I'm pretty sure it's a lot less laggy. It You don't have all these overdrawing problems so much or something. But basically, I've found if you have uh, something like this overlaid the scene, if, if it was object in the scene, it would be really laggy. But since it's on the overlay scene, it is not laggy. Um, 
if you found it to be laggy and you found problems, uh, please go ahead and tell me because I am wrong then. So let's go ahead and make sure that everything's working so we can add a keyboard and a keyboard. And what we're going to do with these is we're going to add message and add a message actuator. And this is going to be called fade in. And this is going to be called fade out. Keep clicking the wrong key. <laughs> so now, what we should be able to do, if I spelt it correctly as I did in the last one, even if I am spelling it correctly, I don't know. Now I click A. Oh, sorry, one. And I click two. So I got kind of got this in the wrong order of rounds. So I'm going to say this is two and this is one. Um, it doesn't matter what order they are. I just wanted to click it. So now when I click one, it fades out. And when I click two, it fades in. So this will stay between scenes, I'm pretty sure. So if we, what, what you could do is when we click uh, one, you could have a timer which counts down after you click that. And once that time is counted down to the specific time when it's black, you'll switch to another scene and it's still going to have that black. And then on that scene, you could have an always, which instantly sends a message which says fade out and you'll get this effect of the it fading back into the next scene, which can be useful for whatever scene you're trying to do. So there we go. There's uh, the basics. Uh, you can use this for a lot of different circumstances. I'm sure I will use it in my own games. Um, just going to make sure that you don't run these too close, because if I run them too close, as you can see, they kind of just overwrite each other, and you don't want that. So you want to make sure that you're not... Um, trying to play it in the same time so you might want to you know do something with logic bricks to stop that or just be clever and make sure that they don't run at the same time but there we go um i'm sure you could use this for a lot of stuff uh but that's basically it if you want to see more tutorials like this and tutorials on other subjects i come out with a new tutorial every single week so if you go ahead and subscribe you'll see them um, weekly so have a great week keep blendering and if you have any feedback about this tutorial love to hear it have a great week and happy 2016